Welcome again, our video friends. I appreciate those of you who view these videos, and certainly I pray for you uh, that God will bless you and help you and grow in the knowledge and understanding of His Word. We're going to pick up again this morning of uh, July. Uh, we're in the third Sunday of July of the year 2021. How long these videos will stay up and be viewable uh, is somewhat out of my control. I hope they're up for a long, long time yet to come. But, uh, and I hope they're a blessing to you. Well, let's look on now. And uh, Genesis chapter 5 and verse number uh, 16. Uh, Meha, Elahel, lived after he begot Jared 830 years and begot sons and daughters. Now notice these men right here. Uh, the length of time that they lived. And then those in verse 17. And all the days of Meha, Elahel, uh, were 895 years. Uh, he lived almost 900 years too, but then the Bible says, and he died. So death is passed upon all, because Adam all died. And to Jared, uh, that means uh, that name means to pour out. If you look at that name, referring, I think, to the Holy Spirit of God. And uh, and he lived 162 years and begot Enoch. Now we know what Enoch means. Uh, that means uh, translated is what the name Enoch means. And certainly he was, as we're going to see in the next verse or two. And Jared lived after he begot Enoch 800 years and begot sons and daughters. Now the population is growing. Uh, we didn't follow uh, Canaan's, Cain's population generation this far, but right here Seth is given for a pretty good length. And I mean, uh, men and women are multiplying upon the face of the earth. Verse 20. And the name, days of Jared were 962 years and he died. Again, another one that lived over 900 years. What about that? And, the, and Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begot Methuselah. Now notice right here, this is real special about Enoch. He walked with God. Enoch walked with God. And after he begot Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters. Now I tell you what, I like thinking about Enoch who lived and who walked with God. And uh, it was said that about him. Walked with God to the point. Now let's, let's look at this. Verse 23. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. Now Enoch didn't live on the earth as long as these others did. Because of verse 24. And Enoch walked with God. Again we're told that Enoch walked with God. And he was not. God took him. Now what about that? Isn't that, isn't that really something right here? Uh, that's so great and so unusual. You don't find it in any of the other of these men's lives, but you find that in Enoch, uh, that he was translated. He was not, uh, for God took him. And uh, it's an amazing uh, uh, scripture that we run across right here about Enoch, who walked with God. Twice, the Bible tells us, he walked with God. And he must have really walked with God, for God took him. And... Uh, he said it was better to take Enoch on home to be with him. And he's certainly a type of the rapture of the church. You can see that very clearly, uh, that he is a type of the rapture of the church. Uh, we read that uh, the church will be a raptured body, that the church will be taken out of this world in a moment, a twinkle of an eye, according to Paul's writings and to uh, Timothy, and that uh, we'll be gone, changed in a moment. And right here we have a great type of that, a, sh a forerunner of that, in Enoch. Uh, and he was not. And the word uh, was is supplied by the translator. Of course, that's part of the verb uh, that that comes from. Uh, but uh, he was not. Uh, he, he not. <laughs> for God took him. Now, all of a sudden, one day, everybody's looking for Enoch. Somehow they knew that God had taken him home to be with him. And uh, they had no sense to realize that. And the Lord impressed upon the writer of the book of Genesis the same thing, whom we to believe, believe to be in Moses. And, uh, but he, he also, uh, to him were born sons and daughters. And uh, Methuselah was another one that was born. And notice what Enoch named him. Uh, when he is gone, judgment. Enoch knew the mind of God. He knew the ways of God. When he saw this son, uh, he must have pleaded with the Lord to let the judgment be stayed uh, until after Methuselah's life was over with. That could have been. 
I guarantee, obviously, he knew the mind of God about judgment coming because Enoch lived long enough to know the world had turned into being a very wicked place. And I also knew as he walked with God what God intended to do with it. You remember God came down the days of Abraham to tell him what he was about to do uh, to Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't think it's strange that God told Enoch what he was about to do to the world of that day and time. Uh, he, he, I feel for sure that he did. And, um, and then he translated Enoch. He pulled him out of this world. Uh, that he did not face death. And we'll find, we'll get, if we get to go far enough through the scripture, another man who was taken out of this world by the name of Elijah and did not see death within it. And who knows, they might be the two witnesses that come back in the, book of, in the time of the revelation, the time of the uh, tribulation period upon this earth. But we know Enoch did not suffer the death that all else faced when they lived upon this earth. And those Methuselah right here will have to go on. Verse 25, Methuselah uh, right here. And he lived 180 and 7 years and begat Lamech. Now, the name Lamech means a uh, conquering king. And so after the judgment of this world, uh, the, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. So it's amazing to me the theology <clears throat> and prophecy in advance that these men knew. Uh, it was uh, given unto them before the flood in the early days of the civilization of mankind. And Methuselah lived after he begot Lamech 780 and two years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were 969 years. He's the oldest man in the Bible, 969 years old. And he died, the Bible says. Now notice about Methuselah and about Enoch both. <coughs> <coughs> that uh, <coughs> some of their sons and some of their daughters died in the flood. Some of their descendants died in the flood. <coughs> These men who no doubt had walked with God <coughs> and knew the Lord, at some point their children did not follow in their footsteps because Noah and his family were the only ones that got on, aboard the, uh, the ark. And uh, in spite of all the warning that was given, some of their sons and daughters and grandsons and great-grandsons did not believe Noah, did not believe God, died in the flood. Now, that's something to think about, isn't it? And that just shows you how mankind can be. And uh, <clears throat> many times, some of us have known some godly people whose children did not live for the Lord, live for the devil, and were proud of it. Well, uh, and, and may have died and gone to hell as a result of uh, rejecting Christ. And so, uh, so we, we need to pray for our children. Be sure we live right before them the best we know how. To always pray for their salvation. Uh, because we see right here, uh, sons and daughters and granddaughters and grandsons who obviously died in the flood because all of them did not get on the ark. Let's read on. And verse 28, And Lamech <coughs> lived 180 and two years and begat a son. And now notice this. And he called his name Noah. What about this? And that name Noah stands for rest. And we're going to find that Noah did rest when we get on through some more scripture here. And, uh, and uh, this saying shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. Uh, that's what he's named his son Noah. And lived after he begot Noah five hundred ninety and five years and begot sons and daughters and all the days of Lamech were seven hundred seventy seven years and he died well uh, he lived a long long time too did he not and Noah was five hundred years old and Noah begot Shem Ham and Japheth what about that that's a little bit of an unusual commentary about Noah right here uh, let's read that again and Noah was five hundred years old. And Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, <clears throat> if I'm reading this correctly, I, I would think that he produced these sons <clears throat> when he was 500 years old. Uh, I know some can read this a little bit different here, but the way I'm reading and understanding this, Noah was 500 years old when he begot sons and daughters. Now, you just don't hear of anything like that in our days. I've said before, we live under the full effects of the curse upon this earth. And uh, man's uh, days have been shortened and are not as long 
as they at one time were upon the earth. After the flood, God shortened the lifespan of men. Uh, <clears throat> right, <clears throat> right after, right after the flood, and men do not live as long in our day and time. But I have known of men who have fathered children in their eighties, uh, <clears throat> and not many women have I ever heard tell of who could have a, a child at that age. Uh, none in my lifetime that I've ever heard about. I read in the Bible about Sarah bringing forth a son when she was right way past age, age, and. Uh, and uh, called his name Isaac, which means laughter, because God had made her to laugh. Uh, but uh, sometimes you hear of women being able to give birth to children in their 40s. Every once in a while you might hear of somebody who's given birth to a child in their early 50s. But not past that, you just don't find that going on. Now, we do not know how old Noel's wife was. I mean, she might have been a very, very young woman. She could literally have been hundreds of years younger than he was. Ain't that something to think about? I mean, that's just amazing to think about uh, uh, some of these things. And she actually could have been, <clears throat> uh, say, five, uh, 480 years younger than he was. And who knows? Uh, the Lord knoweth. We're not told her age. But we're told that Noah was 500 years old. And Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, right here, we see the birth of the three men from whom uh, the new world after the flood was to proceed from. And after the flood, mankind was going to be fathered again by Noah and his three sons. A new birth <clears throat> and a new creation uh, that was coming to be into the world. Uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And out of these three sons right here uh, came uh, the three basic uh, families upon the earth. Uh, from Shem, Ham, and Japheth. You have the African race, you have the Asian race, and then you have the European race. The three basic races that are upon the earth, <clears throat> we read about them right here. This was all born in and, and to the DNA and the makeup of Noah's sons without a doubt. And we're told in the Bible uh, that uh, uh, some things about these three men and their descendants. And so it's a really very interesting uh, scriptures here in chapter 5 of the ten uh, sons or the ten first men in the lineup of the godly line. Now we'll read more about the sons of God uh, taking the daughters of men and so forth. And that's probably from the uh, godless line of Cain and probably from the godly line of Seth is probably about uh, where that would have to be. Because I don't find in the scripture anywhere uh, men being able to marry angels and angels being able to marry men or women such forth and produce. It's not found. But we do find and know that there are these two lines. The godless line of Cain and the uh, godly line of Seth exist in the Bible. And we know that uh, from the names and from the deeds and doings of these sons that preceded from Adam's loins the names they passed on to their sons, and then especially in Enoch, whom the Bible says walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. It's a very interesting uh, uh, message that we read in the scriptures about Enoch. Very interesting. And as he walked with God, as I close out this session, not to challenge myself and anybody who's listening, uh, may God help us to do the same. In this wicked, lost, and dying world that we live in, may the Lord help us to do exactly the same, uh, uh, to, to walk with God. Not always easy, is it? No, it's not. But uh, may the Lord help us to so do and so influence our sons and daughters that they too would walk with God. And, uh, and one of these days, we'll find that the Lord will be back to receive us unto himself. And uh, one of these days, you'll, you'll be looking for we who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and we'll be gone. Because the Lord has came and has taken us away to be with him forever and forever. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, if you've never received Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, uh, you need to do so today. Because if you don't, you could die in your sins and go to hell and be there forever and forever, never knowing anything but eternal damnation and eternal uh, torment. And so it is. We'll close out with chapter 5. 
When we open into chapter 6, we're going to look into a whole new side of God Almighty and a, and a whole new world uh, that's being dealt with at that time.